We get a lot of questions about Harar coffee. Uh, Ethiopian Harar was a coffee that was very near and dear to us when we started Sweet Maria's. And we haven't had Harar for quite a few years, so people are wondering what happened to Harar. I thought I'd make a quick slideshow from my old trip photos to Harar and the areas around Harar, which is called Harar Gay, um, to explain a little about where has Harar gone. Coffee is definitely still cultivated in Harar, but one of the main pressures on coffee in Harar has been a lack of water. The region is very dry and the rainfall hasn't been enough to support even the people living in Harar, let alone coffee production. But another issue is that in Harar, coffee is competing with chat. Chat is a slightly narcotic shrub that um, people like to chew in Ethiopia and other places in the Middle East. This is some photos of coffee with the typical bronze leaf that I seen in Harar when I visited there. This photo kind of illustrates it really well, is on the top level you see coffee trees, in the middle you see corn, and at the bottom are some small chat shrubs. And uh, this is coffee, not chat. But chat has a great uh, return for the farmer. It sells for a pretty good price in the local markets and is even shipped all over Ethiopia. The chat from Harar area is quite famous for being the good stuff. And it's something that um, people just sort of sit around in the afternoon and chew chat and talk to each other, just like they would just sort of drink coffee or tea in a cafe. Um, the main problem is it's usually the men and they usually don't do any work after about two o'clock if they're chewing chat. But this is a photo of the typical Longberry Harar coffee. And the best Harar coffees come really from the eastern part of Harar, but that's also the most drought stricken and, and uh, there's a large a wa ongoing water shortage in the area. Um, these are uh, some variety gardens where the government was cultivating some varieties that would um, be more sustainable in such a dry climate. But Harar coffee was always, um, you know, great because it, the area being dry was the perfect place to produce dry process coffee. In other words, you had the rainfall to result in some very nice coffee production, but then a clear and distinct dry season to uh, get those coffee cherries dried in an appropriate amount of time. And, that was part of the fame and the flavor of Harar. These are classic Harari people, uh, which are a distinct um, group in Ethiopia. As I said, these are unique varieties in Harar that are collected in the ICO coffee gardens and they've been produced in other places. I even saw Harar coffee planted in Colombia once. But the main pressures on Harar, aside from water and chat, is the fact that there just isn't that much coffee. Ethiopians tend to drink a lot of the coffee they produce. And also Harar coffee is very popular in Saudi Arabia. In fact, for many years, the issue in Harar was that a lot of coffee being sold as Harar wasn't from Harar. There was always a premium for it. So you would get low quality uh, naturals like Jima Grade 5 or Kembata, other naturals from other parts of the country, smuggled into Harar and sold as Harar coffee. This is from a trip with some other roasters. That's Phil from Flying Goat, and me in the middle, and Wendy. Uh, with Tony's coffee at the time, traveling in Harar, and I see there's a soccer ball. We had the Sweet Maria's soccer ball we would give away. And this is in the area, I believe, of Choma, which is east of Harar City. One of the unique things in Harar is in the villages, they prefer to haul the coffee from the whole pod into the green bean using a mortar and two women will pound this in this amazing synchronicity in order to uh, remove the green bean from the coffee. This isn't great for the coffee, but the reason this is preferred is, as you can see here, where they're winnowing 
the skin away from the green bean is they want to keep the skins, which is used to make tea. It's kisher tea. Long before I ever heard the term of kaskara, there's a long tradition in Ethiopia, especially Harar in the Middle East uh, and Yemen, to tr drink kisher, coffee skin tea, or gesher, as it's called. And so if the, they send out the pods to a, a mill in Diradawa to do the hauling, then they're not going to get to keep the, um, the skin. So that's why this was preferred in the traditional Harar village. And here you see a good coffee in the background, some defect light beans, and then the skins and parchment removed. These are some photos of the skin that's being removed from the um, and, and cleaned in order to use for kisher, which we used to import from Yemen, actually. So these photos are um, some of the bigger coffee processing plants for uh, the dry hauling in Diradawa. I'm not sure if this one is from Mohammed Oxide, who is one of the, the big players in Harar, and uh, we used to get his coffee from Royal, or um, the Moplaco mill. And Moplaco is the Yorgalis family. Heliana Yorgalis still uh, has an active operation in Harar, whereas Oxide's family kind of uh, went away after he passed on. But dry processed coffee to produce good quality needs a lot of hand labor in order to pick out defects. And Luckily, there are a lot of people who need this work, and as you can see, it's, it's mostly women who are doing this labor. This is in one of the Oxide um, factories getting ready for export, and that's Mohammed Oxide. So the reality is, is since the days where we got Harar, there's been a kind of explosion of high quality natural coffee from all over Ethiopia. People realized that if they ra uh, dried coffee on raised beds and did a lot of hand picking and sorting of the cherry before it's dried, that they could produce this grade one high quality natural coffee. And when we were buying Harar, that didn't even really exist. Um, you basically had commercial naturals as the norm and the idea of high quality naturals was just kind of a fluke. So I don't know if we ever really even saw the best of natural coffee from Harar uh, that would be produced by like today's standards for what we get from coffees from the West, from Agaro, from Jima, from Limu, and from the South all over. Kercha, Hambela, Guji zones, and Yurgachefe. This building may not seem too exciting, but this is one of my most interesting days in coffee travels. Before they modernized the system of auctioning coffee in Ethiopia, they had regional auctions, and there was one in Harar. And what would happen is the trucks would, the Izusu trucks would line up on the street, and they would go out and sample coffee directly from the trucks for that day's auction. And they would be roasted in the, the um, cupping lab, and um, prepared. This is, she's doing a traditional roast just for coffee for drinking. And they'd be graded and they would just cup everything. But this included all grades of coffee, uh, old coffee, commercial grades, coffee with incredible amounts of defects. So I had the pleasure, I guess, of tasting coffee for a full day alongside the cuppers there. And wow, it was incredible because I'm used to tasting just sort of the top tier of coffee, specialty coffee that's already been selected and that has been, you know, cultivated with the intention of very low defect counts. And cupping commercial coffee as it comes into a, a, this sort of raw level was amazing. And you could really start to connect all the things we think of as positive and natural coffees with their uh, evil twin, which is the incredibly defective flavors, 
where coffee's not really well cultivated and well sorted, but there's still some of those positive beans in there. That was a great experience that day. You rarely get a window into that sort of level of coffee and an overview of sort of everything out there that's produced. This is one of the Oxidae factories, and this is, of course, the colors of Coca-Cola. <laughs> I think this photo is from Diradao, which is where a lot of uh, Harar coffee is commercialized. Harar itself is a walled city and a, a very ancient city. It's on a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In fact, there's a couple of roasters in Harar who roast coffee to sell locally. But this was the condition that their commercial roaster was in. It's just amazing. This is another one that's been there for many years, Nure. And hopefully it's still there. He took a lot better care of his roasting machine. And this is sort of your average kind of commercial coffee that you would see in Harar. And it includes uh, black beans and numerous types of defects. So. In terms of getting a good cup from this, you would identify some of those positive fruity notes, uh, even perhaps that prized sort of dried blueberry flavor that we would find in our old Harars, but basically you'd be trying to taste that through this layer of dirt and mold and uh, phenol, phenolic flavor. This is one of the hospitals we had donated to and visited. This is um, sadly a boy that was attacked by a hyena. He was in the, in the hospital for long-term care. Visiting Harar, there's a museum of antiquity there, here showing the Harar gay hairstyles. This is the outside of it, this kind of Oriolan. Oriental-esque features, an amazing carving. It's a very beautiful city. And the other big feature is the local market. I loved the hardware section. It was just incredible. Everything was deconstructed and reused. And in this area adjacent to Somaliland, it's not uncommon to see camels being used. And this is Tef which is the grain, it's a superfood grain that's used in injera, in Ethiopian cuisine. And this is a real highlight, is to see the house of Charles Rimbaud in, uh, in Harar. Charles Rimbaud is a tortured French poet, as you may know, and quit poetry in his 20s and escaped Europe for Harar where he supposedly, the myth says, had to sneak in disguised as a non-European. Europeans were not allowed in the walled city and proceeded to set up a business, which according to him was trading in or smuggling uh, guns, drugs, uh, skins, meaning hides, and coffee. So Charles Rimbaud was a coffee trader in Harar. This is uh, one of the old, old photos of the, one of the gates of the walled city that are still famous, Harar Gate. This one is called Argo, Argo Berry Gate. And another sort of touristy thing you do in Harar is you visit the Hyena Man. Or what I understood, this is Hyena Man number two, because Hyena Man number one had a misunderstanding at some point with his hyenas. And, um, of course, I had to participate, which it seems quite tame at the time, but looking at the photos, you still realize what hyenas can do to you. And uh, maybe it's not so smart to get down eye level with a hyena, but, well, the other kids were doing it. Well, thanks for looking at my Harar photos with me and reminiscing, and I hope that explains a little bit about why we don't see much Harar. And we'll still look, and uh, hopefully someday we will have Harar again at Sweet Maria's.